Hey there guys and gals, hope you guys have been all having a great day. It's Ristocker here and in this video, I will be covering the right mentality or mindset to have when playing in your sub 3k MMR games and I'll be going over all the roles very briefly and this video is meant to just be kind of used as a wrap up to all the various roles and heroes that I covered in the sub 3k series. Now this video is going to be a bit more of a podcast kind of style. You don't really have to pay too much attention to the video. You can have it on in the background and just listen to the contents of the video. Just make sure that you're listening uh, rather attentively as I'll be going over some pretty important um, psychological stuff as well as mechanical stuff that you should be doing in the sub 3k bracket. Now I'll be going over all the roles I said earlier and I'll be talking about specific mechanical things that you can do to make your gameplay a little bit better as well as the team environment that you want to create for yourself to help not only yourself but your fellow teammates in the sub 3k bracket. So that's kind of what you can expect for the video here and I'll get right to it. Let's start off with the carry role and we'll work all the way down to roaming in the order that I just stated. Carry heroes and players in the sub 3 to gate bracket, I'm going to be quite frank, uh, in fact I'm going to be quite frank throughout this entire video, I'm going to be very blunt, is you guys aren't going to have the best last hitting mechanics. So the best advice that I can give you in for players that are playing the carry position, if you think that's your best role, if that's, that's the role that you more importantly enjoy playing, make sure that you go into custom lobbies and just practice last hitting. Just turn off all the bots, just practice last hitting by yourself. And trust me, you'll get better. You want to make sure that you're picking a variety of heroes. So here in this uh, in the video, I had Ursa, Bloodseeker, Sven, Drow, and Chaos Knight as the heroes that I recommended, along with Wraith King being the honorable mention for the carry heroes in the sub 3k bracket. So practice with maybe three or four of these heroes. Get used to their animation. For example, Bloodseeker's animation is very different from Drow Rangers, and Drow Ranger and Bloodseeker are very different than uh, Wraith King. So you want to make sure that you're accustomed to the attack animation of each of these heroes. When you become extremely comfortable where you're getting to a point where you're probably last hitting about I would say six creeps a minute so if you're able to get 60 last hits in 10 minutes that would be very good you probably don't want to spend 10 minutes last hitting maybe spend about five minutes and just keep doing it over and over again until you're used to it um, because it's very important that you're, you're good at last hitting with very low base damage because that's going to be where you really struggle at the start of the game and uh, after you get used to that just turn on some bots put on unfair bots and really try to last hit against those bots because they're actually quite proficient at last hitting. Um, so you want to make sure they're getting accustomed to that. And if you're able to still maintain about four to five last hits, then you're good to go in your games. Now, the thing with these heroes is that you also have to factor in that the opposing uh, here on the offlane is going to be contesting you and that's why I suggest put these unfair bots on as you get a little bit more comfortable when you're playing the game. The second thing is kind of stepping away from the, the mechanical concept is you have to convey to your supports how to play with you. The thing is you don't want to be ordering your team around constantly but always bounce ideas off them. You know ask your support hey can we kill this guy right now, you know, make sure you're saving some mana, don't keep nuking maybe the neutrals or something like that. If you have a Crystal Maiden on your team, tell her to save some mana. Just make sure that you're communicating with your team and say, hey, we can probably kill the offlane Magnus when, when we both hit level three or something like that. So making sure that you convey um, your idea to your team is, is always very uh, gonna be very beneficial for you. Now, when you're watching competitive games and you're watching very high level players, maybe you're watching some streams on Twitch or something, you're going to notice that there's very really, they don't really communicate too much with their supports because the support players at the very high level 6k plus they really know what they're doing well they know how to stack the camps they know how to do single pulls and then pull through the pull through to the big camp and they're not going to mess up the creep equilibrium of their safe laner and in the sub 3k bracket from all the replays that i watch when i watch my friends that are below sub 3k um, what i realize is the supports kind of make the life a little bit difficult for carries and you have to learn how to play through that there's going to be times where your support's not going to do exactly the best thing um that's in your best interest i should say maybe the support's getting a little bit more gold but it's going to mess up you as a carry player and what you have to do is learn how to play around that you have to make sure that you're communicating with your carry uh, with your supports that's the first thing tell them hey don't do a single pull make sure that you stack the small camp if you're going to pull into the lane creeps and things like that so that's probably the, the one of the psychological things I would do. Um, and the mid game is going to come naturally, I think, once you 
become accustomed to the early game. The the real issue that I also find is either the early game and the late game. Sub 3K players have uh, trouble kind of f- really fleshing out their play in the early game. And then their mid game is okay where they spend some decent time farming. And then the, the late game is where I see a lot of issues arise where they don't know how to split push efficiently. They're getting picked off. Um, or they don't push their high ground advantage and there's some heroes that can push high ground really well and there's some heroes that can't so again going back to the list of heroes that i had for example ursa and bloodseeker they're not particularly great at hitting towers they're like okay but they're not uh, on the level of like troll or draw Um, even sven's pretty good with his god strength at taking towers so you have to make sure that you're able to assess the situation you know if you if it's like 40 minutes into the game and you just killed two of the opposing team's core heroes they only have maybe um, their mid hero and two supports left it's probably a very good opportunity for your team to push the high ground so it's about really recognizing the situation that you want to be in and the mentality component here is that when you when a team fight decided you know very decisively in the late game you should always push your advantage and secure the victory or go for an objective like Roshan or take the tier twos. Make sure that you're always taking something on the map after you have a very clear advantage. Uh, you know, assuming your team is in shambles, assuming you know everyone's not at 10% health or something. If you're able to go for something like get some really nice uh, smoke ganks and pickoffs, it's your job as the carry to kind of facilitate what's happening on the map at the very late stage of the game. The early and mid game might be a little bit more predicated towards your supports and offlaner, but in the very late game. You as the carry should be making a bit more calls, saying exactly how strong you are. You know, tell your team, hey, I have 200 more gold to farm until I have a BKB, something like that. And then you group up with your team and you go for a push. So for the sub 3k carry role, what I would suggest is in the very early game, communicate a lot with your supports. Make sure that you know that you guys are on the same frequency, that you understand that you're going to go for a kill maybe in a minute or when you guys hit a particular level you're going to go for a kill so you're communicating the mana that you guys are going to use the maybe the avenue of attack you're going to use maybe you go through the the tree line maybe you abuse the fog or something like that and go for a kill in the mid game there isn't too much advice i can give you because the way you play dota in the mid game varies so much based on who's on the opposing team what i would say is try to farm as safely as you can because as a carry hero i'll a lot of carry heroes not all but a lot of them don't have mid game power spikes now the heroes on this list like ursa bloodseeker wraith king these heroes can fight early they don't need too many items to function so if you have heroes like the ones i just mentioned make sure that you're fighting a little bit more rather than farming a hero like sven needs some pretty key item he needs the tra- the, the treads the Blink Dagger, Mask of Madness, and maybe even a Crystalis or a BKB before he can really start doing some work. But every time your ultimate's off cooldown with Sven, you can potentially go for a kill, get the kill, and go back to farming. You don't want to commit too much. The late game, of course, is where the carry roll shines. And again, you have to make sure that you're communicating with your team. Tell them, you know, I need 200 more gold until I finish my Assault Curious. I need 500 gold for a BKB, etc. Make sure that you're communicating with your team, and if you ever get a decisive victory, make sure that you always transition that decisive victory into an objective like Roshan or a tower, maybe Raxes, which is you know even more fantastic. So that's it for the carry roll, and I'll be moving on to the mid roll. So I spent quite an extensive amount of time talking about the carry position and the mentality that you should have when working in tandem with your supports. And some of that information you can carry over to the to the mid lane, especially regarding the last hitting mechanics. That's something that you can easily do. Once again, we have heroes. Um, the heroes that I suggested were Zeus, Necrophos, Bloodseeker, Sniper, Venomancer, and Viper for the mid position in the sub 3k bracket. And a lot of these heroes have very different attack animations. So a hero like Zeus is relatively poor. Snipers is really nice. Necrophos is kind of in between where it's not amazing, but it's quite decent. So you want to really get comfortable with a lot of these heroes when you're playing them in the mid position, get used to their attack animation, go to the custom lobby, do all that stuff. Now, when it comes to communicating with your team, it's a little bit different in the mid position because typically in the sub 3k bracket, you're going to have what we call a true 1v1, where it's just going to be you against the other mid laner. You're not going to have too many roamers. There's probably going to be a jungler on either team. Um, and even if there are two supports on the opposing team, typically they focus very heavily on shutting down the off laner rather than uh, roaming around the map. So you're going to have a 1v1 for the most part and maybe around the 
four to six minute mark, maybe you, one of your supports will come roaming around. So that's around the time when you really want to focus a little bit more on the team oriented stuff and transition towards the mid game. The main difference between the mid and carry position, especially in the sub 3k bracket, I would say is that you have to make a lot more um, of an impact. You have to have a lot more of an impact than your carry player in the mid game because you are going to be hitting level six. You're going to have your power spikes a lot earlier than your carry or offlane position. So it's very important that you work with your supports. Potentially you can gank the enemy mid laner or you yourself can go to a go to a uh, you know the off lane or the safe lane and secure a kill. Now it's not necessarily the case that you have to go ganking at level six, but I would suggest that you should try it. Um, as you get higher and higher, you'll see that mid laners don't tend to move around as much. They like to farm a little bit, gank a little bit, farm a little bit, and they'll switch between the two. In the sub 3k bracket, what I'm going to recommend is that when you hit level 6, especially if you have a hero that has a very high power spike, a hero like Queen of Pain, if you're playing Zeus, uh, Venomancer, maybe not Sniper, but you know, if you have, have these heroes that have some decent potential at ganking when they hit level 6 or even solo kill potential, play very aggressively. It's very important that you play aggressively right from the get go, get your opponents uncomfortable, and give your team a head start because you're probably not going to play against opponents that can slowly claw their way back in by farming efficiently or making efficient trades on a map using smoke ganks and things like that so if you get an early advantage in the sub 3k bracket chances are you're going to be able to keep that early early game advantage so you want to make sure that you're creating pressure across the map as a mid player and uh, go for these objectives once again now it's going to be a little bit harder right from the get-go so maybe around the 15 minute minute mark and so forth when you get kills try to secure some objectives especially if you're playing a hero like venomancer who's really good at pushing down towers and lanes so that's really kind of it for the mid position there isn't too much to really talk about other than learn your matchups so what you want to be doing is stick to probably two or three heroes and get very comfortable playing those two or three heroes if you really like the mid position if you think the mid role is your uh is the best role for you you want to make sure that you're sticking with two or three heroes get very comfortable learn all the matchups and learn the strengths of the power peaks of those heroes the thing with itemization with the mid role is it's very dependent on what your hero is really good at so if your hero if you're playing a hero like queen of pain you might want to go orchids the vast majority of the time but in some games, you're going to have to realize that you may need like a very early Lincoln Sphere if the opposing heroes have a lot of single target disable. So it's the mid position the itemization is very um, balanced around what your hero does as well as what the opposing team uh, can do. So it's very important that you focus on that. And once again, the mid hero, you want to be focusing a little bit more on the mid game pressure and securing your team at an early advantage so that you can you know have a very smooth transition into the late game and you can finish it off with your carry position offlaning is probably the most hit or miss position that i've seen in the sub 3k some games i see the offlaners just completely destroying the opposing uh, you know safe laners playing their roles really well having dual offlane scenarios where you're playing maybe a hero like undying with slardar or maybe it's like an abaddon lich lane and you're just like mowing down the opposing safe lane even if it's a tri lane you just have such a strong advantage and then other times i've seen the off lane kind of uh, fall flat on its face so when it comes to the off lane what really it comes down to is understanding the strengths of the hero in heroes in that lane and I want to focus a little bit more on the solo offlane aspect rather than the dual offlane aspect. Because the dual offlane aspect is a, a bit easier to play. At least you have an ally there to kind of support you. Whereas in the solo offlane, you're just by yourself. And you really have to understand the strengths of your hero versus who is on the opposing team. That's the first thing that you have to do is as an offlaner, you have to assess what can my hero do. So a hero like Abaddon at level 1 isn't strong and he isn't survivable. He has neither of those two capabilities right from the get-go. So your goal with Abaddon is to try to secure as much EXP as you can in a very safe fashion, whether that means hiding in the tree line uh, with, beside the secret shop, making sure that you're staying in fog and soaking up as much EXP as you can. It's very important to understand that the EXP acquisition is 
uh, 1200 range. So you have about a blink daggers range worth of leeway to soak exp where you don't have to be particularly close to the lane and you can soak up some exp and when you hit about level four level five that's when you become really strong with abaddon you can start pressuring the enemy offlaner so that's talking about abaddon so when you move on to other offlane heroes um, maybe like nyx assassin or undying again you have to understand what's the strength and weaknesses of these heroes uh, Nyx is a little bit more durable because he has a very high base HP regeneration. He has Impale to get him out of trouble. He has his Carapace, Carapace to get himself out of trouble. So he has a little bit more avenues of playing very aggressive early and hitting that level 4, level 5 mark a lot more easily than a hero like Abaddon. So it's very important that you understand the strengths of your hero and really get comfortable with those heroes. The offlane is a position, once again, where... Um, I think you should probably stick to maybe two or three heroes and get very comfortable with those heroes. And offlane is a, it's, it's a little bit different than the other positions where I think you can transfer a lot of the knowledge that you learn uh, through things like how to harass, how to efficiently soak experience. Um, you can transfer that from one hero to the next, whereas the mid roll you can't really do that as effectively. Maybe it's a little bit difficult for support heroes because they vary so much. Whereas the offlane, the tactics that you're using to accrue that EXP and gold is pretty uniform for most heroes. Not, of course, not all heroes, but for most heroes, it's pretty uniform. And you can transfer that knowledge from one hero to the next and have a pretty decent uh, knowledge and foundation of those heroes, even if you're playing them for the first time. So that's the good thing about the offlane. Um, so that's really all I want to talk about is the the early game. Again, offlane, it's a, uh, when it comes to the mid game, you want to make sure you're securing items that are going to help your team win, depending on which hero you're playing. So if you're playing Axe, make sure you have a Blink Dagger in a timely fashion. If you're playing Abaddon, perhaps you want to be going for something like Phase Boot into Vlad's. You don't want to get too aggressive when playing the offlane. Um, sometimes you see players getting things like Midas's and playing a little bit more greedy. Typically, that doesn't work out too well because as an offlaner, you want to make sure you have your impact as soon as possible on the game. Again, trying to work with your mid laner so that your carry position can kind of carry you guys at the very end of the game. So the thing about the offlane is you're typically kind of going to be on an island of sorts if you are playing this solo style. You're not going to get too much help from your team. When you hit level 6, there are some offlaners that can potentially kill the enemy safe laner if they get some kind of support. So if you're playing like a Tide Hunter and you hit level 6, perhaps you want to call up a support into your lane. If you're playing Bat Rider, you hit level 6, perhaps there's a kill potential there. Once again, very important to understand the strengths of your hero and what the opposing team can do. So last but not least, we have support and roaming. And I'm going to be combining these two roles because they're typically played by supports. So roaming heroes are considered position four heroes, which means they get a pretty adequate amount of farm. They'll be purchasing the occasional observe award and maybe a smoke or something like that. But they're going to be focused a little bit more on farming for their items, whereas position five is what we know as the hard support role where you purchase a lot of observe awards. You're kind of sticking with your safe lane carry and trying to make a lot of space for a safe lane carry to farm efficiently. Now, I'll be talking about the support role first, which is, again, the position 5, and I'll be going back to the roaming. And the, again, the reason I'm covering these together is because they're typically played in a supportive type fashion. Now, when it comes to support heroes, it is a... It's both an easy and difficult position to play in the sub 3k MMR bracket. I would highly recommend that you get used to things like stacking camps and pulling into your lane and knowing the timings of the the neutral creeps, when to pull them, how to stack them. We have videos of that on Pugna, so if you guys are support players and you really enjoy playing that role and you want to step up your game a little bit more when it comes to understanding the fundamentals of the map, there are tons of videos on Pugna that I highly recommend you guys check out. So that's the first step that you should do. Make sure you check out a lot of the generic support-based videos where you can really learn how to do things like placing observer wards, the best way to deward opposing observer wards, when and how to stack camps. We have all that covered. When it comes to the mechanical play, it's very important that you understand mana management. So if you're playing a hero like Crystal Maiden who can't throw out too many abilities very early on in the game, you have to make sure that you're not squandering the use of your spells because they are very potent, but they cost a lot of mana 
and she doesn't have the greatest mana pool when the game begins. So the first three, four levels, you have to make sure that every usage of Frostbite, every time you're using Crystal Nova, it's used in such a way that it's either harassing your opponent in the offlane significantly, or you're going to actually get a kill from using that ability. So it's very important, again, to communicate with your carry, make sure that the carry and the supports are on the same frequency, and you guys are making plays that are going to essentially win you the early game well enough to a point where you don't have to constantly be babysitting your safe laner. So if you, if let's say it's five minutes into the game, the enemy off laner is level three and your safe laner is level five, potentially you as a support don't have to necessarily be with your carry anymore and you can apply a little bit more pressure in the mid lane, you can apply a little bit of pressure in the opposing safe lane and pot potentially secure some kills around the map. And this is a good way, a good, a good time to kind of transition into the early stages of playing the roaming style of support. So roamers are typically going to be like heroes like Earthshaker, uh, Ricky. Um, sometimes you'll see like Spirit Breaker. These are heroes that are very good at just playing in the fog of war and suddenly appearing somewhere on the map to secure some kills. Now, again, when you're playing these roaming styles, some heroes can roam right from level one. So if you have a hero like Spirit Breaker or a hero like, um, Ricky, these heroes can apply a decent amount of pressure right from level one. They may not necessarily get a kill, but they can definitely force some kind of regeneration usage or heavily damage an opposing uh, mid laner, for example. A lot of them function a lot more once they hit level two or level three, which is why I recommend that you don't start off immediately by roaming. So maybe you go in a kind of like a dual lane scenario with your off laner, you hit level two or level three, and then you start transitioning into more of a roaming style because a Pudge at level one isn't a fantastic roaming hero, but when he gets that rot and meat hook combo, that's when he becomes really potent. Once again, a hero like Earthshaker doesn't necessarily need level level two because all you really need is fissure so he's a hero that can function a little bit better as a level one roamer ricky becomes significantly more, more potent when he's level three and he has a point into each of his abilities with the smoke screen the cloak and dagger and the blink strike he becomes a lot more of a threat so if you want to have it, once again you have to kind of understand the strengths of your heroes as a roaming style now when it comes to the mid game supports the position for the roamers they're going to have a little bit more farm they might have items like treads tranquils maybe they're working if you're a ricky you're working towards your diffusal blade around the 15 20 minute mark if you're an earth shaker you want to have a blink dagger around the 18 to 20 minute mark as kind of a position four hero so those, those are some really good timings whereas if you're playing a position five and you're in the mid game like the crystal maidens the lions you're probably just sitting on maybe like a tranquil boot still you're you're mostly purchasing the observer wards and sentries and it's kind of a very selfless way to play the game you're really trying to augment the strength of your team and you're letting a lot of your teammates get some farm uh, so that they can have a much better game and that's there's some heroes that are well suited for that so it's very important that you understand the difference between the position four and the position five style the position four style again the mentality here should be create pressure around the map and then allocate some time to actually farm and secure items. Whereas the position five role, you're constantly going to be trying, the goal is to constantly help out your team. You're gonna be purchasing the observer wards, the, the sentries, you might have to get the smokes, you're gonna get a plethora of TPs because you have to help out the mid lane when they get ganked, help out the off lane when they get ganked. And once again, just to reiterate, it's a very selfless style. So that's primarily the difference between the roaming and the, the, the position four and the position five in the mid and um, the early and mid game and when it comes to the late game uh, the position four becomes a little bit more of a core they're going to have these items that let them play uh, very aggressively they're going to be relatively strong powerhouses you have earth shaker with his echo slam you're going to have pudge with extremely high uh, playmaking potential thanks to the meat hook ricky becomes a pretty da uh, pretty good damage dealer very potent uh, when it comes to physical attacks as the game transitions. And most position fives like Lich, Crystal Maiden, Jakiro, etc., they're still not on the same level when it comes to damage control, uh, or actually damage output, but they're very good when it comes to still throwing out CCs. You're going to work towards more supportive items like Force Staff and Glimmer Cape. Perhaps you'll have like a Solar Crest or something, depending on if you're playing a hero like Vengeful Spirit, maybe. So these are the heroes that are very supportive in nature, and even as the game transitions on, your value becomes very uh, very support-oriented rather than the heavy disabled. So for example, a hero like Lion and Rasta, they're very 
focused on throwing out disables and constantly controlling the enemy in the early and mid stages. And as the game transitions on, a lot of their skills become very utility based through the itemization that they're going to have and help their allies. So that's the primary difference between position four and position five. Once again, both of these roles require a lot of communication with your team. Um, and you want to make sure that you're constantly communicating with your safe laner or mid laner, depending on where you are on the map. And you guys, um, it's, it's just going to make your ganks a lot more successful. It's going to make laning a lot more easy. So that's really it for the, the mentality component of the supports and the uh, roaming style. So that concludes all the roles, and thank you guys for watching thus far. Some of you guys may be wondering, why did I include all the roles rather than making small segmented videos? And the main reason for that is if you want to get better at Dota and understand a lot of the core fundamental concepts of the game, it's a lot better if you listen to every position and understand how to play those roles, especially in the sub 3 KMR bracket.